Did you know Skylanders made over $3 billion in just 5 years? But then seemingly overnight, it vanished from store shelves. What could make such a successful franchise disappear? The answer might just surprise you, and it's a lesson for every gamer and game developer out there. Imagine a world where your toys come to life in video games. Sounds like every kid's dream, right? Well, that's exactly what Skylanders did. It was this crazy idea where you'd buy these cool little figures, put them on a special platform, and bam, they'd show up in your game. Mind-blowing stuff for young gamers. When Skylanders Spyro's Adventure hit the shelves, it was like printing money. We talking 500 million in its first year alone. Kids were going nuts for it, begging their parents for even more figures, more games, more everything. It was the hottest thing in gaming and everyone thought it would last forever. But here's the thing, nothing lasts forever in the gaming world, not even Skyland. By 2016, this kid's game had pulled in a whopping $3 billion. That's billion with a B. How did they do it? The answer might make you rethink everything you know about gaming. Turns out, Skylanders had a secret weapon. Yearly releases. Each new game brought fresh characters, cool features, and tons of hype. It was like the Christmas came early for kids, and it was a nightmare for the parents' wallets. Let's talk about Skylanders Giants. This game was a big deal, literally. They introduced these massive new characters that were twice the size of regular Skylanders. And guess what? They cost twice as much too. But did the fans stop? Nope, collectors went nuts for these big boys. The yearly release cycle was genius. It kept the franchise fresh and exciting. Just when you thought you had all the characters, bam, new game, new figures to collect. It was like Pokemon but with real toys you could hold. And speaking of characters, by the end of the series, there were 166 unique Skylanders figures. That's a lot of plastic folks, but each one was special with its own powers and personality. Kids couldn't get enough of them. But here's where Skylanders really shined, the tech. They weren't just regular toys. They had this cool RFID technology that let them quote unquote come to life in the game. Put your figure on the portal and boom, your character appears on the screen. It was like magic for kids and pretty impressive for adults too. Critics loved it. They praised the game for their fun gameplay and awesome character designs. It wasn't just a toy cash grab, they were genuinely good games that both kids and collectors enjoyed. Then came Skylander Swap Force. This game lets you mix and match characters' parts. Top half of one Skylander, bottom half of another. It was like playing mad scientist with your toys. The customization options were insane, and it added a whole new layer of strategy to the gameplay. But wait, there's more. Skylanders kept backwards compatibility. That means your old figures from previous games still worked in the new ones. It was a smart move that kept fans invested in the franchise. Why throw away your old toys when you can keep using them? And let's not forget the marketing. Activision went all out with the commercials, promotions, and tie-ins. You could not turn on a kid's TV channel without seeing a Skylanders ad. They were everywhere. Skylanders trap team took things even further. They introduced Trap Masters. They were special figures that you needed to have to access certain parts of the game. It was cool, but it also meant you had to buy more stuff to get the full experience. Some fans loved it, others not so much. At this point, Skylander seemed unstoppable. It was making billions, critics loved it, and the kids couldn't get enough. The franchise was at the top of the game, riding high on the wave of success that seemed like it would never end. You see, Skylanders was everywhere, and I mean everywhere. You couldn't walk into a store without tripping over a display of these little plastic figures. But here's the thing, that might have been part of the problem. Let me explain. When something's super popular, companies tend to go a bit overboard. They think, hey, if one Skylander is good, a hundred might be better. But that's not always how it works. People can only buy so many toys before their shelves and wallets start crying for mercy. So what happened? Well, Activision kept churning out new games and figures every year. At first, it was awesome. New characters to collect, new adventures to have, what's not to love? But after a while, it started to feel a bit too much. I mean, how many giant plastic toys can one kid, or let's be real, adult collector, really need? And here's where things got tricky. As the franchise grew, so did the price tags. Those little figures that cost you around $8, by the end, some were going for $14 a pop. Imagine trying to collect them all now. You'd need a second job just to fund your Skylanders habit. But it wasn't just about money. The games themselves started to change, and not everyone was happy about it. Remember Skylanders Swap Force? It introduced this whole new mechanic where you could mix and match characters, 
Sounds cool, right? Well, some fans loved it, but others, not so much. Here's the thing. When you change something people love, you're always taking a risk. Some players thought the new swapping mechanic was the best thing since sliced bread. Others felt like it messed with the classic Skylanders formula they'd grown to love. It's like when your favorite band suddenly changes their style. Some fans will dig it, others will be yelling sell out from the rooftops. And it wasn't just the swapping. Swap Force also introduced something that might seem small but was actually a big deal. Jumping. Yep, before this, Skylanders couldn't jump. When they added this new feature, it changed the way levels were designed and how the game played. Some folks thought it was a great addition, others missed the old school feel. Now you might be thinking, but wait, isn't change good? Don't games need to evolve? And you're not wrong, but here's the catch. When you're dealing with a franchise as big as Skylanders, every possible change is a gamble. You might win over new fans, but you risk alienating the old ones. And let's talk about the new games for a second. Activision was pumping them out faster than you could say Portal of Power. A new game every year sounds great in theory, but in practice, it put a ton of pressure on the developers. They had to come up with new ideas, new characters, new everything and fast. And when you're rushing something, quality takes a hit. Take Skylanders Superchargers for example. They introduced vehicles, which was a cool idea. But to make room for all those new fancy cars and planes, they had to cut down on the number of new Skylander figures. For a game that was all about collecting cool characters, that was a pretty big deal. And then there was Skylander's Trap Team. This game added a new twist. You could trap villains and play as them. Cool concept, right? But here's the catch. To really enjoy this feature, you needed to buy new traps. And those traps, they weren't cheap. For some fans, it felt like the game was constantly asking for them to shell out more cash. So what does this all add up to? Well, it's like eating your favorite food for every meal, every day, for years. At first it's amazing, but eventually, even the best things can get a little stale. Hey guys, before I continue yapping, I just wanted to show you guys this picture. 99.99% of you guys are not subscribed. And this is not an edited or modified picture, this is genuinely a real statistic. Please subscribe, it'll help me put out more content like this, and help me increase the quality of my output. While Skylander was busy churning out figures, two giants were plotting their revenge. What happens when Mickey Mouse and Batman decide they want a piece of attention? Spoiler alert, it's not a great news for our Skylanders heroes. You know how it goes. One day you're on top of the world, the next you're just yesterday's news. That's pretty much what happened to Skylanders when Disney Infinity and Lego Dimensions showed up to the party. Suddenly, Skylanders wasn't the only cool kid on the block anymore. Let's talk about Disney Infinity for a second. This game came out just two years after Skylanders and it was like every kid's dream. You could play characters you grew up watching on the TV. You had all these Disney characters that could interact with each other in this big sandbox mode. Imagine Mickey Mouse hanging out with Jack Sparrow, pretty wild right? And later down the line they even introduced Marvel characters. If you want to go into depth, I have another video on this channel about Disney Infinity which you should watch. And then there was Lego Dimensions. These guys took things to a whole new level. Not only did they have a ton of popular characters from different franchises, but they also let you build your own portal out of Lego bricks. It was like they combined the best parts of Skylanders with the creativity of Lego. Now, you might be thinking, but wait, isn't more competition a good thing? Well, not always. You see, when Disney and Lego entered the market, they didn't just want to take a slice of the pie, they wanted to take the whole bakery. Suddenly, kids, and let's be honest, adults too, had to choose between Skylanders, Disney Infinity, and Lego Dimensions. And when you've got Mickey Mouse and Batman on one side and some random dragon dude on the other, well, you can guess who often won that battle. The thing is, Skylanders used to be special because it was the only game that let you bring toys to life in a video game. But now, that wasn't so unique anymore. Disney Infinity and LEGO Dimensions were doing the same thing, and they were doing it with characters everyone already knew and loved. And let's talk about the money for a second. These games weren't cheap. Each one had its own starter pack, its own figures, its own everything. Parents who used to just buy Skylander stuff now had to choose between three different toy lines. It was like the great toys to life war and everyone's wallet was caught in the crossfire. But it wasn't just about the money. These new games were actually pretty good. Disney Infinity let you mix and match characters from different Disney worlds. And Lego Dimensions, it had a whole building aspect that Skylanders couldn't match. So what happened to Skylanders in all this? Well, it started to lose its shine. Remember when I said Skylanders made $3 billion in its first 5 years? 
That sounds impressive, but here's the thing. A big chunk of that money came in the early years. As more competitors entered the market, Skyline Harry sales started to slip. And it wasn't just about the competition taking away sales, the whole Toys to Life market was kinda getting crowded. People were starting to get tired of buying new figures and games every year. It was like toy overload. Skylanders tried to keep up, of course. They kept trying to introduce new gimmicks with each game, but it started to feel a bit desperate. Like they were throwing everything at the wall to see what would stick. Meanwhile, Disney and Lego were just cruising along with their popular characters and a solid gameplay. The worst part? Skylanders started losing its identity. In the beginning, it was this cool, unique thing, but as it tried to compete with Disney and Lego, it started to lose what made it special in the first place. It was like watching your favorite indie band try to go mainstream and lose all their charm in the process. So there you have it. Skylanders went from being the only game in town to just another option in a crowded market. And when you're up against Mickey Mouse and Batman and Legos, just another option isn't really good enough. The downward spiral began with Skylanders Superchargers. As mentioned before, the next big thing about Skylanders was introducing vehicles. It sounded good on paper, but it wasn't a really good idea. You would think who wouldn't want to race in a Skylander car or fly a Skylander plane. But here's the thing, it wasn't what fans wanted. The problem was, Superchargers changed the core of what made Skylanders, well, Skylanders. Instead of focusing on new characters, they put all their eggs in the vehicle basket. And let me tell you, that basket had some holds. Now, I'm not saying Superchargers was all bad. The game had some cool ideas, but it felt different. Like Skylander was trying to be something it wasn't. And you know what? The fans noticed. They weren't happy. The excitement that used to surround the new Skylander releases, it was fading faster than my motivation to go to the gym after New Year's. Critics weren't too thrilled either. They said the game felt rushed, like Activision was more interested in getting it out the door than making sure that it was actually good. Some levels were called uninspired, which is a fancy way of saying boring. But here's the real kicker. Remember when I said Skylanders made billions? Well, after Superchargers, we're talking millions. And I know it sounds fancy, but in the world of big budget games, that's like going from a mansion to a cardboard box. It wasn't just about the money though. Skylanders was losing its magic. That special something that made the kids beg their parents for just one more figure, it was disappearing. This was just the beginning of the end. Superchargers was the first domino to fall. Once it was tipped over, the whole Skylanders empire started to crumble. So what went wrong? Was it the vehicles? Was it the higher prices? The feeling that Skylanders was trying too hard to be something it wasn't? Probably all of the above. It's like Skylanders forgot what made it special in the first place. You see, Skylanders wasn't just about toys or the games. It was the magic of bringing your favorite characters to life. It was about collecting, adventuring, and having fun. But somewhere along the way, it got lost in the sea of vehicles and gimmicks. It all comes down to Skylanders Imaginators. This was supposed to be the game that saved the day. The one that would make everyone fall in love with Skylanders all over again. But guess what? It didn't quite work out that way. Imaginators had some cool ideas. You could create your own Skylanders, which sounds awesome, right? But here's the thing, it just didn't click with fans. The game sales were, let's just say, they weren't great. And then, after Imaginators, something weird happened. Skylanders just stopped. No new games, no new toys, no nothing. It's like the whole franchise went on vacation and forgot to come back. It gets even weirder. In March 2021, Activision shut down the Skylanders website. It was a big deal. It basically meant no more updates, no more content, no more anything for Skylanders fans. How did Skylanders go from zero to hero to zero again? Remember the RFID technology that I was talking about? Well, there was a big problem. Those chips don't last forever. It's like they had an expiration date. So all the Skylander figures you bought, they might not work forever. But it wasn't just about the toys. The games themselves started to lose their magic. Imaginators got criticized for having boring levels and a story that was as exciting as watching paint dry. And you know what else? The whole Toys to Life thing was starting to feel old. It's like when everyone was obsessed with fidget spinners and then suddenly they weren't. The gaming world had moved on and Skylanders were still trying to make fetch happen. So there you have it. Skylanders went from being the coolest kid in the school to that one kid nobody remembers in the yearbook. It was a classic case of too much, too fast. They tried to keep the hype going, but ended up burning out instead. But here's the really, really crazy part. Some people think Skylanders might just come back. Yep, you heard me right. 
there's been talk about Microsoft maybe bringing it back to life. So what can we learn from all of this? Well, for one, even the biggest, coolest things can fade away if they're not careful. It's like that old saying, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. And boy did Skylanders fall hard. But it's not all doom and gloom. The story of Skylanders is just a reminder that in this world of gaming, nothing lasts forever. Today's must-have game is tomorrow's bargain bin find. It's a lesson for game developers out there, keep innovating, and most importantly, listen to your fans. <coughs> Ubisoft. So what can we learn about Skylanders epic face plan? Well, it's like when you eat too much candy, eventually you're gonna crash. Skylanders got too big, too fast for their own good. They kept pumping out games and toys until everyone was just sick of it. And when Disney and Lego showed up with their own toys to live games, it was pretty much game over for them. And when I was talking about Skylanders coming back to life, a question just looms around my head. Would this game even work now? The gaming world has moved on and kids just might not care about it. If you think about it, the newer generations have less and less kids that actually care about playing with toys. These days, all we're getting is iPad kids. So what do you guys think? Could Skylanders rise from his ashes and actually perform in the market? Or should we just let it go to rest? Like your Skylanders toys which are in a plastic box which you forgot existed. In conclusion, the Toys to Life genre sounded good on paper, but maintaining the cost of producing those toys was too much to handle. And for developers to keep pumping out new games every year was too much burden. The only way we might ever see a comeback of Skylanders or even the Disney games or the Lego games is that if it was completely digitalized. The main problem was that the world started moving towards digital games like Fortnite. Fortnite had introduced a battle pass system which was pretty much pumping out new content every season just like Skylanders did every year but completely digital, lesser cost, faster production and just much more efficient. Let me know if you enjoyed this video by liking it if you did or disliking it if you didn't. And please let me know your thoughts in the comments and if you really stayed this far it would be amazing if you can subscribe and watch my other videos. Cheers.